Wizards. <laughs> uh, all right, listen, you picked the Wizards initially, then you flopped and you went with Washington. What did you see that made you glad you picked the Wizards? Well, it's simple. Russell Westbrook, the Brody, he brought chocolate back to Chocolate City. Okay? This is a team that was about 150 games below 500 at the All-Star break. And Bradley Beal was in and out of the lineup. What did Russell Westbrook do? He elevated his game. This guy is a winner. I know he doesn't have championships, but one thing you know about Russell Westbrook, if he's on your team, you're getting to the playoffs. By the way, he saved Scott Brooks' job. Oh, there you go. All right. Uh, Westbrook and Embiid, 76ers, Wizards. Those two don't get along from what I heard. How do you see this series going? Ooh, it's hard for me to go against Russell Westbrook. You know how ferocious he is, but the big MB, big Philly, the 275-pound version of Akeem Olajuwon is going to dominate, Neil. And I see a gentleman sweep. The Wizards is going to get one game, but after that, they have no answer for the big fella. Look at his footwork. I mean, he is just something. One of one, a generational talent, and I just see the 76ers winning this series in great fashion. So you got the 76ers in five over the Wizards. Absolutely. Okay, the NBA announcing Thursday its three finalists for MVP. The big Embiid, Jokic, and the, the dude with the green eyes that you talk about, Curry, <laughs> who you say you never pick against. So who are you picking? You gotta go. You gotta go with one of your big men, yeah, don't you? I, I, I know that, Neil. And look, I'm s sitting up here as a former center, a former big. I love to see this. No, you're still a current I, big, okay? Yeah, I, I am. But don't remind me, okay? <laughs> just a sixty pound. I just added sixty pounds of retirement weight, okay? But look, I'm going with Steph Curry. You are right. Just think about it. A two-time MVP, and right now we're talking about he's having the best season of his career. Uh, leading the league and scoring. If you take Steph Curry off this team, this Warriors team will be in the lottery, okay? And just look at the personnel that he has around him. On a night-to-night -night basis, he has to go out there and perform at an extremely high level. He's doing it in great fashion. And as of today, right now, while you and I are standing on stage in your sport, your sports center on your show, he's the best player in the world. So you said never bet against Steph Curry. But t on Wednesday, you said Memphis will beat Golden State. Are you sticking with that or are you flopping? No, I'm sticking with that. I'm going with Memphis. I'm going with those young guns. John Moran and uh, Dylan Brooks, one of the best. young backcourts in today's game and they have a big fella, big Giannis Valentunas, who's a beast in the middle, okay? So I'm sticking with them. The, the Memphis Grizzlies has been here before. Just think, they was, they, they was in the same situation in the bubble. I'm rolling with Memphis come tomorrow. The big perk is not flopping, but he will flop with <laughs> us later on SportsCenter, and you don't want to miss that. Well, that's what I said. I never said he was the best player in the world, period. I said over the last three months, he has played like the best player in the world, and I don't think, it's, I don't think anybody can deny it. He's been absolutely sensational, really reminding us that he's the greatest shooter on planet Earth, the greatest shooter that has ever been created. That's, that's number one. He's the league leader in scoring at 32 points a game. He shot better than 49% from the field, better than 42% from three-point range. He hasn't had Klay Thompson. I'm going to go as far as to say this. It is already a foregone conclusion in my mind that if Klay Thompson returns healthy next year, Golden State Warriors are going to be in the conference finals. Golden State Warriors. If Klay Thompson was there last night, this might have been a blowout. They might have took the Lakers out convincingly. Damn shame that he wasn't, he wasn't there. I love me some Draymond Green. I'm a huge fan of Draymond Green because I understand the game and the intangibles that he brings to the table, and he was exceptional defensively. Um, and, and obviously the assist and knowing who to get the ball to and when, whether it's Steph Curry or Jordan Poole, who's a very, very promising player. That Draymond Green deserves a boatload of credit. But you cannot go scoreless in 41 minutes on the court. You can't do that, Draymond Green. You got to score. Draymond Green's got to score 10 to 12 points a game for this team to really, really have a chance. Uh, to, to, I'm talking about to actually win. The bottom line is this. Steph Curry, what he has done and the load that he has carried by himself to have the Golden State Warriors in this position, as far as I'm concerned, right now, he looks like the best player in the world. And let me be very clear. We all know he looked like the best player on the court last night. We all know that. Until it if you watch most. the game, yeah. 
He was, he was the best no, player on the court. LeBron was the best the player on the court last, last night. night. That's not even right. LeBron was also playing defense, was a version of Steph and a version of Draymond last night. As usual, he was the best player on the court. It's not even right. But let me just say this. Was Steph the best player in the world over the second half of the season? Yes, he was. Over the second half of this year, last month and a half especially, he was the best player last in the world. two, three months? Yeah, three in months. the regular season. Why was that? LeBron was hurt. Harden was hurt. KD was hurt. Those three guys better than Steph. They were all hurt. Okay, now let's talk about the entire season. Is, is Steph going to win MVP? No. You know who is? Jokic. You know why? He's better. He's a little better. They were both healthy all season. Jokic is a little better. He's going to win MVP. You know who would have won MVP if he would have stayed healthy other than the three guys I mentioned? Joel Embiid. He would have been better overall. He just didn't play enough games. So was Steph the best player in the world over the last, let's say, I'll split the difference with you, two months of this year in the absence of three players better than him? Yes, he was. That's as Ain't much that as I you said? can say. Ain't that what I said? I said over the last couple of months, he's played yeah. like the best player in the world. But let's Ain't not that what I said? I think that's what I said. I think you that's what I said. That's the last three months is exactly what you said. That's, the, that's number well, one. But you left no, out some, that's big, that's some big details, That's number did one. You? Number two, just because those players were hurt doesn't take away from what Steph did himself against the competition. I'm not saying that James Harden would not have been sensational. Joel Embiid would not have been sensational. Uh, uh, Jokic, Jokic rather, or LeBron. I'm not saying any of that. What I'm saying is we know what we saw from him. And because of what we saw from him, even if those guys were balling, because you got Kyrie and Kevin Durant as your teammates and you're sharing the basketball with them and doing a lot of great things. If you're Giannis and Budenholzer is, is, is tweaking your game to some degree to get you set for playoff basketball, we're not questioning their overall abilities. We're not questioning what they would have done. I'm just saying we saw what he did and what he did at that particular moment in time over the last two or three months was the best basketball in that span we've seen this year. The best. Mm, mm. That's what I'm saying. Uh, because, of the many... because, because of the accuracy and the consistency with which he was doing it. No, I would say the best basketball we saw played this year was by James Harden before he got At hurt. Time, once he that, joined right. the Nets. That was the, yeah. Someone said, what's the highest level of basketball we saw played, period? James Harden this year was the highest level of basketball we if saw you take played. Into, if you're taking into account your selflessness, your ability yeah. to run a team, have assist along with points. But I'm just saying, when you look at Steph Curry, the shots that were falling, where they were falling from, the accuracy with which he was producing, and the fact that he was propelling a Golden State Warriors team as a one-man show. And I would know something about one-man shows because I covered one for 10 years in Allen Iverson, okay? And, and, and he was a one-man wrecking crew for the Philadelphia uh, 76ers on the other side of the ball. He's an undersized guy, you and know, I saw what, it. When James Harden didn't have KD, he just had Kyrie, he was winning. When he didn't have Kyrie, he I'm just had... I'm not questioning had, anything about He just James had KD, Harden. he was winning. When he didn't have We're either one of them, We're not questioning anything about those guys. We're not he was questioning anything thing. about those guys. All right, let's move this conversation forward. Stephen A., I have a question for you. With Clay Thompson, how many teams in the West and which teams are better than the Warriors? With Clay Thompson? Yes, when, think of Clay Thompson returning, hypothetical here. Honestly speaking, with Klay Thompson, a healthy mm -hmm. Klay Thompson, yes, sir. the only team I'd give a chance as being definitively better is a healthy Los Angeles Lakers with LeBron James and, and AD. And I don't even know if that's so. Because the two, the two, two of the top five greatest shooters the game has ever seen on the court together, they're just lethal. Now, they hurt you in different ways than LeBron and AD can hurt you. And we know that. But these dudes are marksmen. Oh, by the way, LeBron is a liability compared to them from the free throw line. Oh, by the way, these two both religiously shoot better than 40% from three-point range. And Klay Thompson is one of the elite defenders. He can defend three, four positions on the court as a 6'7 shooting guard. We can't ignore that. You partner him with the greatest shooter this game has ever seen, with him being a top five shooter of all time himself. How are we going to sit there and summarily dismiss anybody, anybody with the Warriors? I look at the Warriors with Klay Thompson, and I say 
the only team that I would def- I-, I-, I could sit up there and say, hey, they might be better is LeBron and AD. And that's a maybe because of how lethal Clay and Steph are together shooting the basketball. It's even worse than that, actually. Yes, the addition of Clay Thompson makes them very, very good because Wiggins really developed as a player. And we haven't even mentioned Wiseman, by the way. But it's worse than that because they also have the T-Wolves pick which is going to be a very high pick. So actually, the Warriors are also better positioned to make a trade for an available superstar than any team in the league. With that pick, Wiseman, and if they wanted to, Wiggins, whether they keep Wiggins and now they have the athletic two-way player to go with Clay and Steph, right? Or they package him with a pick with Wiseman, who, who knows with what, to, to make a major move. The Warriors will likely, there's a really good chance that they field the most talented team, at least in the Western Conference, next year. Well, all of those things are true. I don't disagree with any of those points. I'm just saying that in the end, listen, I'm looking at Jordan Poole. Like, Andrew Wiggins showed me something once upon a time. I said just a few months ago, wouldn't give him away for a box of cookies. I wasn't talking about his talent. I was just talking about the fact that he doesn't produce when it counts. He produced last night, played some really good defense against LeBron James. He dropped about 21 points, wasn't anywhere to be found in the clutch moments, but that's because they were looking for Steph as they should have been. I was impressed with what it would, Wiggins showed up. If he showed up like that every day, I would feel far more confident about him because I know he's got the skills. It's the want it factor, the want it factor that I question about him on far too many nights. But I don't question that about Jordan Poole. I like this kid. And when I think about Clay and Steph coming back together, Wiseman is better than Ja Ja Pajulia was or Andrew Bogut was, at least offensively and defensively. He's got some promise. And so mm-hmm. when I look at it from that perspective, I expect fully the Golden State Warriors, so long as they're healthy, the Golden State Warriors will be in the conference finals last next year. At the Here's very the least, they probably might come out the West. Here's the other thing about the Lakers real quick, since we're spinning it forward on the Warriors. You know what I noticed last night? No playoff Rondo. Rondo's not on the team anymore, and Schroeder is a better regular season player than Rondo. But, in, but last night I thought he was a jag. He was just a guy. Not a bad player. He's just, he was just a doesn't guy. Doesn't run a team. Doesn't Rondo run a team. Rondo is a floor general and all-star when you need him most, and the Lakers did not have that third guy like that last night. All right, we will leave it there.